Hi everyone, my name's Nick. I'm sorry I wasn't able to make it to the uh, the contact course. I was really looking forward to meeting some of you. And um, uh, yes, but I am in South Carolina for my sister's wedding, and so I wasn't able to make it. But I'm going to give you my presentation over the web, and so uh, hopefully that will work well. Right. So I would like to look at uh, Maori Girl and uh, look at it through the lens of Benedict Anderson's book, Imagined Communities. Imagined Communities is a book concerned with nationalism, national identity, or as he calls it, nationness. So as I was reading Maori Girl, I was struck by uh, the difference between Netta's acceptance of the mostly Pakeha Wellington community, uh, representative of the national community, and its acceptance of her. It seemed that she is happy to join with and enter into that national community, but that the community is not, for the most part, willing to let her join. I had read Anderson's book, Imagine Communities, some time ago, and trying to understand how Netta could both belong to and be excluded by a community, I returned once more to Anderson's book in hope of an answer. And what I'd like to do today is discuss what I found. So to begin with, I'll start by situating this presentation in the context of a few of Anderson's key ideas, and then I'll look at why Netta accepts the national community and conclude by considering why that national, largely Pakiha community excludes her. As his title suggests, Anderson believes that communities are imagined. But what does he mean by this? Well, Anderson gives us this helpful definition. He says that a nation is an imagined political community, and imagined as both inherently limited and sovereign. There are a few key ideas in this definition. First of all, it is imagined. So a community is imagined in the sense that the members of the community hold a common conceptual image of what their community looks like, or should look like, and this gives the individual place and identity within that community. This imagined picture of the community, common to all members, also defines how people should inter interact with each other. Thus, this community, imagined in the minds of the people, is lived out as people interact. It is also important to note, though, that this imagined community is not necessarily imaginary. It has a history, a culture, and a language. It is imagined in the sense that it is a, a common picture or imagination held in the minds of people. It is an image that is the person's concept of what the community looks like and, define, and defines how that person relates to others. Not only is the community imagined, it is also limited. It has finite boundaries. The nation is limited because it defines itself and its identity. This definition is achieved through, amongst other things, a shared history, a shared culture, and most importantly, through a shared language. A shared language, culture, and history enables people to define their community and build a picture of what their community looks like. A member of this community has a particular kind of history, comes with a particular kind of cultural root, and speaks with a particular language. But remember, this delimitation of the nation's identity always takes place in relation to the other. For the nation to exist as an entity, there must always be an us and, then, and a them. There must be otherization. Anderson also notes that a... Uh, nation is sovereign and self-determining, but it is also a community. So this is a promising rubric, I thought, and one that could begin to explain Netta's sense of belonging to the national identity. And if my original question was, how can Netta join the national community and, for the most part, be excluded from that community, then Anderson's rubric provides the answer Netta, as far as she is concerned, belongs to the national community by virtue of the fact that she carries the same mental image of that community, but is excluded by others from this community on account of the colour of her skin. 
So the first question is, how did Netta come to share in this imagined community? Remembering that a shared history, shared culture, and shared language are an integral part of delimiting the national identity. We can trace this de the development of this national imagination in Netta right from childhood. Remembering back to the beginning of Maori Girl in chapter 2, we have Netta in school learning to read and write the language of the national community, that is English. It is interesting to note how the learning of English leads to the otherization of Maori as a language, creating a boundary of acceptability. Neither the school children nor the teacher are tolerant of or sympathetic toward the use of Maori leading to the situation where Netta was not allowed to speak, and I quote, her own language without an urgent but impalpable sense of sin. And her father supports the use of English over Maori, which is interesting, believing that if the children are to make their way in the Pakeha world, they must know English well. He realizes that a member of the national community speaks English, not Maori. And if the nation, as an imagined community, limits its identity primarily to include those who speak English, the Pakeha's language, then Netta, by virtue of holding English as her primary language, gains the ability to enter the, into this national, largely Pakeha community. And she does indeed gain entrance into this imagined community because when she calls the milk bar for work and the hostel for accommodation, those ladies accept her on account of her English speaking. And this is where the idea of an imagined community is shown most powerfully. Because when Netta calls those ladies, they obviously thought, well, the girl on the phone speaks English, she must be one of us and not one of them. Equipped with English, she is able to engage with the mass media also. Anderson suggests that mass communication, and in particular the print media, gives rise to this imagined community. Simon During, in his article, Postmodernity or Postcolonialism Today, explains Anderson, saying, Nationalism emerges when some languages get into print and are transmitted through books, allowing subjects to identify themselves as member of the community of readers implied by those books. I'm not sure about you, but one thing I noticed was the ubiquity of newspapers and magazines throughout the book. Beginning with Netta's father and his reading of the newspaper, the print media often holds significance. It is the site of news, the site of the weekly horoscope, the portal to jobs and accommodation, the source of shipping, schedules and sailors, the centre of a gambling scheme, and something everybody reads together and at the same time. We also see the presence of the picture theatre espousing national narratives through shorts and God Save the King before the movie, and of the radio giving them a sense of belonging to the larger national community. It's interesting to note how the narrator speaks of this imagined community when he notes the radio programming gave them the sense that, and I quote, someone important knew they were listening. So it is through the mass media that this image of the nation as a community, an imagined community, is built. As I noted earlier, an imagined community is played out in the ways people interact with each other. This is seen when uh, Netta first visits a lounge bar with Arthur. The narrator writes, and I quote, She held her gin and lime in her hand, trying to poise it as nonchalantly as the woman in the ads in the picture magazines, the slim girls in the sheath-like silk skirts she had seen in films. The media had constructed a picture of what an individual in the national community looks like, and Netta, wanting to belong to that community, behaves in a way that she thinks or imagines will be acceptable in the slightly foreign Pakeha world. Thus, through language and exposure to media, Netta imagines herself as part of the imagined community that is the national identity. However, despite her embrace of this community, she is not accepted by it. Despite speaking English and holding some cultural commonalities, she is not accepted by the community on the account of, her color, of the color of her skin. 
Arriving at the milk bar and at the hostel, she is rejected by both because she is a Maori. But why does skin color matter? This discrepancy between the image of community communicated to Netta and the community's acceptance of her is important because it reveals the locus of the national narrative. Earlier I mentioned that the imagined community is limited. There must be an othering, an us and a them. And what Maori Girl shows us is that the national identity is a Pakiha identity and has no room for Maori despite the invitation for them to join. Thank you.